Old Murders in the Building Season 3. Episode 3 has probably been my favorite of the season so far. Even though I don't feel as if we've got a lot of information on who killed Ben Glenroy. Either way, let's decode Only Murders in the Building. Grab your hankies. This one's going to be a little bit all over the place. We've been having a lot of power outages, so I'm going to try and record this as quickly as possible. Charles and Mabel seem to be the only ones interested in finding out who killed Ben Glenroy as Oliver is busy trying to recoup his show, creating a new musical, Death Rattle Dazzle. At the beginning, I know it was very quick shot and it doesn't amount to anything but while Howard's at the piano, there is a bottle of gut milk zero, I'm guessing zero calories or zero sugar, something along those lines, and I thought that was pretty cool. Also, that first rendition of Creatures of the Night that he played, I thought was pretty good. Um, not the other versions with all the characters and the crab breeders, crabs breeding, it was a little too much for me, but overall... I think that this show could actually work as a musical, and I'd like to see it on stage. During this time, Howard mentions that he has a brother, Moses Morris, who runs promotions for State Farm Insurance, and I think this might be a little bit of the clue of the overall story going on in Only Murders in the Building. I know John Hoffman had mentioned that there is a Moriarty-type character, and I still believe that it's Howard. And him having a brother or cousin, I can't remember which one, that is really high up in an insurance company gives me very big mafia ties kind of feeling. Because insurance is seen as a legal racketeering and to a lot of people, I think insurance in a way is, I don't want to get too political with it, but insurance and the mafia have a lot in common and mafia members were known to go into insurance once that whole empire was sort of disbanded, even though mafias are still a big thing in the country. The murder board is in fact moved to Mabel's place because, of course, Oliver is focused on his play. I don't know why it's not in Howard's, but I do believe that it's Mabel's to help bring up the idea of her wanting to run the show, or her being very progressive and forward with the podcast, and this will be a big reason why she's able to afford or live in the Arconia. Likewise, she went to Ben's dressing room or Ben's apartment later and she marveled at it and said that she loved it a whole lot. And I think that's kind of telling that that will be hers one day and that she won't have to leave. One thing that kind of got me is that when Charles and Mabel were looking at the board, well, they said, Another female killer, that's too much, which I very much liked. Throwing that idea out of the window. So Donna, I'm sorry, she can't be the killer. Joy, even though I still think she has some ties to the story, I don't think she's the killer. Cliff is still my number one for the killer. But something that Charles said was very interesting. He said that Ben's blood came back clean. And that is very confusing to me. I've been sitting on that thought for the last almost two days now of Ben's blood being clean and how was he poisoned. Yes, Mabel mentioned some drug that is able to dissipate out of the system, but I just don't know what it was or how this was done, even though I still do believe that it was a cookie and maybe they expected him to eat more of it and that is why he didn't die. Maybe he just had one or a piece of one, a little corner, you know. He didn't eat enough to actually kill him, and maybe if there was more of it in his system, it wouldn't have come back clean. Mabel and Tobert, Tobert, I'm going to mess that up forever, meet on the elevator up to the penthouse where Mabel is going to look for some clues, and Tobert says that he's looking for a boom mic. Well, he first he says equipment, and then he says boom mic. And this whole situation was a little strange to me, I think that he was lying. I don't understand because when Dickie comes in, he goes to hide. It's one thing to say, hey, Mabel, you need to hide. But what would Tobert or Tobert, I can't remember which way it is, have to hide from if he's just going there to get something that belongs to him? I don't understand why he would be hiding from Dickie. 
And also, he later explains to Mabel that Ben grabbed this camera away from him, put it in his dressing room, and it just continued recording. And that's where we see the video that they watch at the end. While they were in the armoire, uh, Tobert tells Mabel the story about him witnessing a baby elephant struggling in the mud. And he first lies and says that he went down with the rope, struggled for three hours and got it out, but then recanted that story and said that he didn't do anything and that he just stood there and watched. I think this is a little bit of the moral and ethical dilemma that people um, often face or whether or not they should act or whether or not they choose to act. And as a documentarian, I don't like it, but I believe it is their duty to just document. So I like that little idea, conundrum, that it placed him in. But I do believe that that kind of mirrors what possibly could have happened to Ben. There was a camera place there where it was just recording Ben. And I, I can't remember what the, I believe it was called uh, Nightcrawler. Um, I can't remember the name of the guy. He dated Taylor Swift a while ago, I believe. But he was a filmmaker who, or a documentary or a reporter, something like that. It's been too long since I've watched it. But he would record things and maybe put himself in situations and later on maybe kind of create situations where he would have a story. And Tobert said that he is making a movie about this whole situation. So I really believe that Tobert is the one who plays the cookies in Ben's room. That is what he ate. And that is what almost killed him. Tobert was trying to make a movie and now he's going to make a movie or a documentary about Ben almost dying and then dying. And he's just making sure he gets that footage for a great story. And I think he got this whole idea from his time in Botswana with the baby elephant. I also think it was uh, uh, Mabel and Tobert are 100% all over the place impeding uh, police investigations. They've got all this information, all these things, and they're not sharing it with the police. They're trying to make their own stories, which I don't mind for the story. I think it's pretty good. But uh, just kind of shows, like, people are kind of messed up, you know. If you think this is really the case, I don't know, call Detective Williams. Tell her what's up. Instead of doing it yourself, maybe get her help. It just seems a little sus, but that's neither here nor there. Death Rattle Dazzle was almost gone, but the song, I believe it's called Look for the Light, beautiful song, sung by Loretta and Kimber. Amazing harmonies. I liked it a lot, and I like that it also had the theme of looking for the light at a lighthouse. And lights and lighthouses has been a recurring theme I've seen a lot. Even Ben, when he popped back from the dead, sort of, and into Olive's apartment, he said that he saw the light and he needed to do better. Kimber's voiceover at the beginning also spoke about a light and a spark, you know, and people seeing it, and that little bit about her meaning to snuff it out. Um, I don't care about that too much. I know that Kimber isn't the killer. It's way too early and way too much focus has been on her. I don't know what Kimber and Ben's relationship was. I do believe Mabel will talk to Kimber, and that is the scene that we saw with uh, Mabel in front of Kimber's door, like, hey, Chica, what's up? Being all cringe. I I think that's that situation, but either way, we know that she's going to be cleared. I do believe that is going to happen in the next episode, Ghostlight. Also in this episode, I believe that since they believe they saw Ben talking to someone in his dressing room, they're going to go to the Gooseberry Theater, and that's where we'll see Oliver in Ben's dressing room, Charles in Ben's dressing room, and Mabel in Ben's dressing room. Maybe that's where we see the lipstick on the wall, and that's where Charles gets the cup, and maybe where they pick up the cookie. In the trailer, we saw Mabel catch Tobert behind the scenes doing some fishy stuff. That's why I believe he is the one that tried to kill him. Mabel's going to catch him back there, but they're going to use the guise of we were both investigating and he seems clear. Again, the video of Ben that was recorded by Tobert 
supposedly by Ben unknowingly of him talking, talking about, oh, you're so sweet, you're going to ruin my career. It's obviously, at least for me, the cookies, and that's what he eats. I don't know how it could be anything else, but I think that Tobert knows this also. I don't know, has anyone mentioned the cookie on the board that was in Selena's TikTok? I'm trying to stay away from other people's stuff, but I feel like this is like just a nail in the coffin. Ben talking about you're going to ruin my career, and in a way, it did ruin his career. He got sick on stage, and then subsequently was pushed out down an elevator shaft afterwards. Someone in the comments mentioned that there was a possibility of Ben having a twin, and that um, I'm going to give all my thoughts on that. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I know that it is a, I won't say common, but it is a trope in murder mysteries for there to be a secret sibling. And it's kind of, in a lot of ways, um, frowned upon, unless you give a lot of foreshadowing to that happening. And I will say, there is a lot of foreshadowing for that. Mabel talking about birthdays, and then the three cribs. Um, but I just don't think that it's logical for an actor, especially someone as famous as Ben Glenroy, to have a secret brother or secret two brothers that no one just knows about. It does hint at it a whole lot. Ben Glenroy is three first names. And I think that's really interesting. But the world would know. He's a famous actor. And we don't know too much about his... We don't know too much about his childhood acting other than he was fired from Brazos when he was eight. Other than that, we know nothing about his childhood. Nothing at all. But being a part of Cobro and Girl Cop, this could not be hidden from the public. This would be all over the news. Um, just everyone, everyone would know, like, agents, things like that. He would have to hide that from everyone. Literally everyone. It's literally impossible. I don't like it. And I think if that actually happens, I'm going to be a little upset. I will, though, admit that it does help tie into the stories with the lighthouse and death rattle, with the mother figures and the maternal um, Satan. It does tie into death rattle, dazzle, with the maternity ideas and protecting those. I just don't think that it would logically make sense that Ben has multiple relatives or I just don't think that it makes logical sense that Ben would have a brother or two brothers. It would be common knowledge. And to make it seem as if this guy who is probably world renowned, or not renowned, but known all over the place, has two brothers other than Dickie that no one knew about. Again, I couldn't find too much that helped to figure out who the killer is, but it was one of my favorite episodes. And uh, another thing I will say, murder mysteries usually have to show, or should show, if it is fair play, who the killer is. At least you have to see them on screen or within the story early on. Now, I'm going to give them a little bit leeway and say next episode will still be early on in the story, even though it's close to the halfway point. But that means whoever the killer is, we would have seen them in some capacity within these episodes. My idea for now is that Tobert attempted to kill him with the cookie, kind of recreating the elephant story that he saw in Botswana. And then Cliff, for some reason, is the one to actually push him down the elevator shaft. I'm not exactly sure why, but I am glad that Cliff decided to go on with the musical. Next video that I'm going to do, uh, probably Saturday, is going to be subscribers theories theories that you guys have said um, in the comments I want to highlight all of them um, give my input on them whether I think that they're plausible or likely um, so if you have anything that you haven't even mentioned before or even if you think it's a little bit out there let me know down below 
I'll look through it all and try to use my little brain and see uh, what I think of it all. Either way, thank you guys. Either way, thank you guys for watching so much. My name is Dallas, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.